What's up, ALMC family? I'm Ivan, and I'm here with the one and only Pastor Adam. We are so excited because we're going to pick his brain. We're going to sit down and talk with him, kind of see what his day looks like, or his week, rather. Hey, what's up, dude? Uh, hey, man. We just got done preaching the weekend, so yeah. we just came back from right. uh, the third service. Well, Saturday at 6 p.m. is technically the third service, right. but second service on Sunday. So, yeah, we just finished. And you're not only speaking this Wednesday, you're also speaking the one after. Next weekend as well, yeah. So I'll be speaking this Wednesday now and then next weekend as well. So, so for, we're very excited. So for those of us that aren't pastors, <laughs> yeah, just it just walk us through not only the preparation, but how do you stay rejuvenated? Because yeah. you just sound cool, clip like, oh, it's whatever. I have to do another sermon. And, <laughs> yeah, I mean, but I know it's more than just yeah. that. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, part of it comes you you have you 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 have to regularly be not only in your word, but you mm -hmm. have to regularly be studying uh, right. in, in your Bible because. If uh, and writing, so mm -hmm. if you get backed up and you get backtracked at all, well, then mm -hmm. that's when it becomes very stressful. Right. And for some people, that this isn't ne ne necessarily their primary gift. Right. So just because somebody's a pastor, uh, it doesn't mean communication is their primary gift. Mm -hmm. And so I've I've been blessed enough that my main gift is communication, and I right. lack in a lot of other areas. Sure. Like Pastor Diego says, he's not a very good counselor. Like, neither am I. You know, <laughs> I, I cut, we sit down, I want to get you out in 15 minutes, because I feel like I figured out the problem. But right. a pastor who's gifted with, with counseling, he, he can spend three hours uh, in a room. And so right. everyone kind of has their, their gift and leaning. So mine would be communications, but I have to constantly be mm. studying. And, and so I'm always like three ahead. So this message right. I just spoke this weekend, mentally, it was done a month ago. <laughs> and so then it was just a matter of kind of fine tuning. Mm -hmm. And then this message that I'm going to actually, I was going to be speaking it this Wednesday, but, but I decided to move it to next weekend. Mm -hmm. That one was actually done two weeks ago. Wow. And so now, um, so I'm kind of always seeing about a couple weeks ahead of time, mm -hmm. uh, at least three message ahead of time. So then that's why you said, if I, if I don't, if I seem calm, it's because uh, I'm, I'm on another, another message right. already. With the process that you have, you already know what works, so you're just already in the middle of all that. Mm -hmm. So then, yeah. okay, so this Wednesday, we've been kicking off this Dangerous Prayer series. Where did the inspiration come from? Because I heard that it's a lot about what you and the team put together. So what was that all about? Yeah, so at least for Wednesdays, and sometimes on the weekend, I, you know, I'm over our preaching team, mm -hmm. and, then, and then over our series that we kind of step into. And so... Um, what I wanted to do for dangerous prayers mm -hmm. was, is really for me, some, it, it depends, but in this particular one, you know, I, I, I was encountering just a lot of people in the church who consistently are asking for prayer requests and need prayer. Right. And, um, sometimes for people, it's just, they, they, they lack understanding on how powerful prayer is. Right. And so sometimes they'll come up and ask for prayer. That seems to be something very serious. And I'll kind of respond at like, how much have you been praying on this? And they kind of say, well, it's my first time. I'm coming to you wow. for the first time. I'm thinking, you know, do you know how powerful prayers are? Do you right. know how dangerous prayers are? Right. Um, yeah, you must, right. that may have not been connected to you yet, because if you knew, you wouldn't be waiting till Wednesday or Sunday to come ask a pastor or an elder to mm -hmm. pray for you. You'd be doing that every, every day because you knew that that shifts heaven and earth. Right. And so with this series, we really wanted to point some really powerful moments in the Bible and we see it every every moment that we all look up to mm -hmm. in the Bible at least as a miracle mm -hmm. it, it kind of initiates as a prayer that's mm -hmm. what it does so you take you know Moses when he splits the Red Sea I right. mean you know God tells him put your rod in in the ocean mm -hmm. that's 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 prayer when God starts talking that's communication and prayer so that's where we really wanted to focus on and show how many times in the Bible you take Elijah in the fire. That's right. happening prayer. You take Jacob when he wrestles uh, Jesus or the angel of the Lord, which I interpret as Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all prayer. Right. So anything that you know is a miracle in the Bible, Jesus, when he places his hands, mm -hmm. you know, that's a form of miraculous prayer that's happening right. when he heals a blind man or he heals a lame person or when his disciples would go and do that. Mm -hmm. That was all prayer. Right. So people need, I think people need to recognize that uh, the steps towards breakthrough mm -hmm. is in prayer, so you know, and, and we need to be, we need to be more commit, committed to that. That's so um, awesome. Yeah. So then what story are you going to be using for your for your sermon. Okay, right. so I was, so that's why our online people will know, I was, <laughs> I was doing an incredible story in Judges that's like, it's life altering. It's just incredible. Mm -hmm. And you know a little bit about the right. story that I'm sharing. I decided that 
it, it's just it, to me it was it's just so special and so good that mm-hmm. I have to do it next weekend. Mm-hmm. So I I, pu- I put it on the side. Mm-hmm. So I, I was actually this Wednesday one was done. And right. I was preparing my next weekend message, right. but I decided to take this one and move it to the next weekend. So now this Wednesday, right. it is going to be, I am still studying for it because I was two <laughs> weeks ahead. So right, I had right. this one and this Wednesday one done, but I'm moving it now Wow. Okay. because I feel like God, I feel like just everyone in the church kind of needs to hear this message. Wow. So um, even though I love my Wednesday people, right, but right. I'm like, no, the weekend needs to hear this message. That's so good. the Wednesday one, it's going to be on a dangerous prayer. Right. I'm most likely going to be somewhere in the gospels that include Jesus because he was the most killer at the, at praying. Right. And he right. taught us how to pray numerous times in the Bible. Right. Bible. So I just encourage this weekend to come because anyone who's been experiencing, whether you're watching online or you're in person, mm-hmm. our Wednesday nights have really been special with right. Pastor Kenny. I mean, mm-hmm. the spirit of God w- was there during praise. And worship. It was crazy. It was different than most Wednesday nights. I'll right. tell you that much. So with that being said, I can, I can promise you, we're probably going to go into a little bit extended time more worship. Gotcha. I know that much. And we're just going to, we're going to um, really encounter those dangerous prayers. That's so yeah. awesome. When you were thinking about this series about dangerous prayer, you did specify about how there's people that were always coming to you with issues and you would ask them, why aren't you using this tool of prayer? Have you used it? And when you would get the responses, it'd be like, well, there's the issue. So how how important is prayer to you and your life in general? And how do you apply that in various mm-hmm. elements of your life as well? Yeah, no, I think that's a great question. I mean, prayer for me is is really a, 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 a daily action. Mm-hmm. It's a daily habit, but it's something that um, it was taught and it was shown to me mm-hmm. from my dad. So, um, you know, my dad, Pastor Diego, when I would wake up as a kid, you know, I'd hear him praying in the spirit. I'd hear him also praying for all of us. So I'm taught at a young age, uh, that really the path towards a relationship with God Mm -hmm. is in prayer and, and, uh, and really reading your word. Mm -hmm. And then on our way to school, you know, my dad would say, who's going to do the prayer for the day? And if Mm -hmm. if one of my brothers would have to, and if, if none of us raised our hands, he would just pick one of us type of thing. And then we'd go to at, we'd be at the dinner table and he'd have right. us pray and mm-hmm. it, you know every single day every single day my whole life growing up was surrounded mm-hmm. around some type of prayer. That's he awesome. would tell us that we're gonna pray for so and so and so and so. He'd always be telling and he would engage us. He'd be like, Adam, you say the prayer. Mm-hmm. And if we were praying for someone's healing, he, like at seven years old, mm-hmm. I mean, it's pretty intimidating. But you right. end up learning. And so now as an adult, I've just learned uh, there are daily actions and steps you take towards prayer. Mm-hmm. And and it's it could be as little as when you get in your car and um, you just want to, I do this often when I'm in my car, I just start thanking God for my mm-hmm. son and my wife. Cause That's I never want to forget that. And right. so I get in my car and I'll just be like, God, thank you for Matthias. God, thank mm-hmm. you. Just that you're just protecting him and looking after him. And thank you for my wife. And right. I'll kind of go into that almost daily That's good. Um, just to remind myself to be appreciative mm-hmm. and thank God that he's blessed me with those things. That's Even so at good. times that, I'm annoyed, right. you know, I still have to do that, right. you know, like, yeah. Right. Is there something that you want to tell that person that maybe is on the fence? Sh- should I tune in? Should I stay? Should I listen to this message? What well, message do you have for them? I would say if you've ever needed prayer, ever asked somebody for prayer, mm-hmm. ever hope that someone would pray for you, even without you asking, then I encourage you during these whole next couple weeks to tune in because there are going to be so many key features, so many key points, and we're going to be praying as well as a church as well that you're going to learn and walk away with and hopefully build more confidence with. I know for me, one of the hardest things to do, it was before I became a pastor was like praying for someone where they actually hear me praying. I would pray in private, but I didn't like it. But as my relationship grew with God, Mm -hmm. uh, he put more of a boldness in for me to actually, when someone says, Hey, can you pay for my mom? I'd say, yeah, I'll pray for you. And Mm -hmm. then I'll, I'll leave. Right now. I have to stop and pause. Say, no, Adam, stop and say, what's stopping us from praying for your mom right now. Right. And I have to do it. And so there's things in these series that are going to challenge us and you're going to want to come because you're going to just walk away totally uh, uplifted, encouraged, and uh, hopefully learn something that you haven't known before about prayer. That is so awesome. Well, PA, thank you for the time, brother. Thank you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Yeah, King. I can't wait to see King. Sir Prophet. Ivan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, guys, thank you for tuning in, and then we'll see you guys shortly.